I'm so glad you decided to watch this video. If you have a swimming pool, it's important to understand how easily you could ruin your swimming pool by doing this one thing wrong. No matter what kind of pool you have, vinyl liner, fiberglass, concrete, anything at all, if you drain it, there is a chance you are going to cost yourself a whole bunch of money. And you might think to, to yourself, well, I don't know, I've drained my pool before everything was fine. Yes, maybe. Like, I mean, you can drain pools or some pools sometimes, or maybe even some, some people can drain some pools sometimes in some areas. But that's a lot of all, an awful lot of qualifiers, you know, there. And I would be worried if I owned a swimming pool right now, should I drain mine? And the answer is probably not. So let's talk about this for a second. Concrete and fiberglass and then vinyl liner. So concrete and fiberglass both have the same problem. They're a boat that we've buried in the ground. And if you have water or a high groundwater table, it can push. The hydrostatic pressure on the underside of the pool is very, very powerful, but it's stabilized by the weight of the water inside of the pool. That's how that whole system works together. As soon as you take the water out, you take away all of that weight, and it's a lot of weight. Now what happens? Well, I mean, there's concrete, there's dirt, there's, you know, friction, there's a lot of stuff holding that pool in there, but how high is the ground, you know, the, the, the groundwater table? Because if it's really high, like imagine just grabbing like a beach ball and trying to just push it underwater and hold it there. It'd be really hard to do. And so that's hydrostatic force. It's incredibly powerful. It can and will lift those pools out of the ground. If you drain them improperly, if you don't follow the process that you're supposed to follow by trying to alleviate the hydrostatic pressure by pulling the hydrostatic relief valve out. Sometimes you have to drill holes in the floor. Um, I mean, you could uh, run a sump pump that's in an adjacent sump well. Anything like this to help, you know, lower the water table immediate around, um, immediately around the pool and help reduce those hydrostatic pressures. You, that's what you have to do if and when you drain that pool. And further to that, some of the time you don't even do it because it's like the wrong time of year. A lot of people say to me, oh, I have a concrete pool, I'm draining it to paint it, how do I get it dry? It's like, well, it's April, and it's raining for the next 25 days straight, go ahead and fill it back up, because you're going nowhere with that painting process, you know, so that's, that's a reality as well. Fiberglass is kind of the same thing as concrete, except it's not as strong, it can't absorb as much force, uh, and it's also, you know, not as heavy, so it's probably more inclined to pop out of the ground than a concrete pool would be. And in both cases, those pools are basically ruined because you really can't reset. Them. It's like basically you need to rebuild the entire swimming pool when that happens. So it's a really bad thing. You definitely don't want that. Don't drain your swimming pool if you have either one of those, even a little bit, because you don't know, you know, what's going on with the water table around your pool. Or if you do and you know what you're doing, just make sure you also know that you never drain your pool like adjacent. You wouldn't just drain it like six, eight, ten feet away. Drain it to a remote location, not near the pool area. That's very important. Now we're going to talk about the vinyl liner swimming pools. If you drain a vinyl liner swimming pool, you can drain it to a certain amount and it's safe. And you can fill it back up and nothing happened and everything's okay. Past that safe level, the liner starts to move and shift. When the liner is installed, you use vacuums, sometimes multiple vacuums, to kind of like suck, tattoo that liner on a hot sunny day right onto the, the walls and the floor. And we hold it exactly there with those vacuums and until such time as that water reaches the minimum safe level. Now, we used to say that that minimum safe level is about six inches to a foot of water on the floor of the shallow end of your swimming pool. But nowadays, you know, people have more advanced vinyl liner pools. You could have ledges or steps or some, some feature that requires the water level to be even higher than, you know, 12 inches of water covering the floor. So with a vinyl liner pool, just be aware of the fact that there is a point where if you drain too much water, now the liner is going to try to shift or move 
and you it doesn't really go back like you would have to drain it down further and then reset it with the vacuums and then fill it again and that doesn't really work you know a liner by year seven it's it's lost all of its elasticity so over that seven year time period it has a little bit less stretch and elasticity every year and at you know seven to ten years there's just none left at all so if you try to drain it too much thinking oh, i'll just reset it after that that liner might never reset it might have no stretch at all left in it and now you've bought yourself a new liner because you drained your pool don't drain your pool vinyl liner fiberglass or concrete unless you know what you're doing because you absolutely can ruin it if you found this information helpful please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel and you can check out my website swimmingpoolsteve.com